Hey, he's, he's got a phone here, Jimmy. I'll home run here. Oh! oh. I love playground games. Flag football. Four square. And of course, kickball. Now I don't know if kids nowadays still play these types of games, but I certainly did when I was growing up. And for some strange reason, the more I grew up, the less I found myself playing these types of games, which is honestly a huge bummer considering how fun I remember them being. So a couple months ago, a few of my friends got together and we played a game kind of similar to kickball. It was really fun and I had a great time, that is until my team lost 6 to 19. So I began to wonder how my team could have lost with such a big margin. Who knows, maybe we were unlucky, or maybe, just maybe, there could have been a better way for us to assign teams. Huh? Now because of this whole experience, I decided to build a web app to split players into two fair teams based on skill levels across five different categories using machine learning. Totally not a waste of my time or anything. Now before starting this project, just like any other data science project, I needed data to work with. So I sent out a Google form to a bunch of my friends asking them to rate their confidence from one to five across the following categories. Knowledge of the rules of kickball, running speed, throwing ability, catching ability, and lastly, batting or kicking ability. Now this is by no means a perfect system at measuring skill, since there are a lot of confounding factors and different people have different perceptions of what it means to be good at something. A much better system would be to host tryouts and observe how players perform in real life, but let's be honest, no one really wants to try out for a casual game of kickball. <laughs> so for us, a simple survey will do, we'll just need to take our data with a grain of salt. When it actually came to assigning teams, there were three main iterations that I went through. To start off, we have random selection. This is by far the easiest way to assign teams, and it mostly involves randomly assigning each player to a separate team. The problem though is that random selection doesn't always equate to fair selection, and there's no way to consistently ensure that our results are even, which leads to a lot of variability. This brings me to my second approach, alternating teams. A slight improvement over random selection would be to first sort players by their overall skill level, then assign every other player to the opposite team. Unfortunately, a problem that arises with this method is that skills wouldn't be evenly distributed. For example, there's really no way to guarantee that all the good kickers aren't on the same team and all the good throwers aren't on the other. So that brings me to my final iteration. Clustering. The solution that I came up with was to first use a k-means algorithm to classify all the different types of players we have in our roster, then use a greedy algorithm to split these players into fair teams. So let's break down what that means step by step. K-means clustering is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm that identifies patterns in unlabeled data, where K is the number of clusters we want to extract. It accomplishes this by first finding what are called centroids, which are essentially randomly chosen from our dataset to represent the center of clusters. All of the other data points in our dataset would then be assigned to the nearest centroid, and lastly, the position of each centroid is readjusted until it is the mean of all of the points in its cluster. Once the centroids find their optimal cluster, they stop readjusting. Using our k-means algorithm, we can take our dataset, which looks something like this, to produce another column that looks something like this. Here we can see that each player has been designated a player type, and if we group people on those player types, we can see that each group has a similar skill set. Now that we've clustered our players, we can divide them into two teams using what's called a greedy algorithm. What this means is that at every moment, we want to be making the best decision to balance our two teams without thinking about the future. We'll start by, again, ordering our players by their overall skill and assign the top two players to be team captains. Then we'll start traversing through all the other players. Each player would be assigned to the team with less players of that type. If the amount of players of that type are equal, then the player is assigned to the team with a smaller cumulative skill. If the cumulative skill between the two teams are equal, then the player would have to be assigned to a random team. We'll repeat this process for every player in our roster, and in the end we should get two teams that are not only similar in terms of overall skill, but also have fair distributions in terms of the different player types. So now that I knew exactly how I wanted to divide my players, it was now time to build a simple user interface that allows for unique inputs and to host this web app online so that anyone on the internet would be able to play a fair game of kickball. Oh, 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 oh.
Oh, oh, I didn't know you were filming. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, 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 I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a look at the scoreboard from the two games we played, this is definitely not balanced. Like I said in the beginning of the video, different people have different perceptions of what it means to be good at something. We'll just need to take our data with a grain of salt. Most of the players from that day likely weren't very confident in their abilities, and as a result underreported their skill levels, which obviously led to less accurate matches. Are oh. you answering these as honestly yes, as possible? Yes, yes, too. Oh, okay. be like oh. Oh. <laughs> in hindsight, I think we could have played a couple practice rounds first, then survey our players to obtain more accurate readings, since they'd already have a feel of where they stand. Of course, we can record more objective statistics, like how many runs a player made or how many times a player caught a ball, but they would be really difficult to measure since everything happened so quickly, and each player would have to play at least once, making it much more difficult to gather data for larger games. So that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. This was kind of just a small mini project that I worked on over the course of the summer, and I figured it would be really cool to share with you guys. If you guys are interested in learning more about how I coded it, I'll be publishing and linking a Jupyter Notebook in the description below, so definitely go check that out. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for sticking to the end. Go outside, go play some kickball with your friends, and I'll see you guys next time.